setting for this almost incredible case was a penitentiary on the West Coast. His principal characters were the men behind its walls. counterfeit money have been known to conceive elaborate schemes in order to print illegal currency without detection. In fact, counterfeit money has actually been made inside a penitentiary. And now in my role as chief of the United States Secret Service, I'm going to tell you of such a case and the story behind it. Treasury file 2474, United States Secret Service. The case of the man outside. You've know, been acting these last couple of days. Ducking me, turning your head away, pretending like you don't know what's going on down in the printing room. You know plenty. I only know what I've seen, Joe. So far, I've seen nothing. By doing what, Ed? Sticking your head in the sand? That ain't gonna work. Be a lot safer for all of us, Ed, if uh, you was in on this deal. Well, you cut yourself in for a big piece of dough. I'm tired, Joe. I gotta get some sleep. I gotta know where you stand, Eddie. You know, you're the, uh... fair-haired boy around here with the warden and the rest of the Stooges. A guy like you might get careless enough to talk. Just to save your own skin. What I don't know, I can't talk about, can I? All I want to do is mind my own business and keep out of trouble. A place like this, that's a tough order, Ed. Look, Joe. I've been around here an awful long time. Going on 14 years. You know how long 14 years is? Look at my face. When I came in here, I was 31 years old. I had a wife and two little kids. And I ain't kids no more. All the time that was growing up, I never even saw them. My own kids. Don't even know what they're like. Can it, will you? I got my own problems. Joe. In two months I'm coming up for parole again, and this time I've got to make it. Even if I have to get down on the ground and crawl the rest of the way, I've got to make it. It's gonna be rough, Ed. For all the rest of us in on it. It's gonna be rough for one guy in the shop to try to stay on the outside. Sit. 
When you get a chance, run off about 30 more. Yet. We've been squirming all day. You think the world was coming to an end? You're doing too much, Joe. You're taking too many chances. Well, what are you worried about? You ain't in on it. Ain't I? I'm the foreman of the shop. I'm responsible for what's going on here. So what's going on? You don't know nothing. Remember, you're the guy with his head in the sand. You can't keep on like this, Joe. Taking us away from his regular work. Throwing off the schedule, pulling out slugs to run your plate. Sooner or later, the warden's gonna ask me what kind of a shop I'm running here. Why we ain't getting the jobs out on time. Let your look out. That's why I wanted you down to shake. The cover for things like that. Now, if you want a cut of what we're making. No. I don't want anything. I just don't want to get into trouble, that's all. Well, who does? Joe. If it ever gets out that you're making queer in this shop, it ain't gonna get out. That's the one thing I'm gonna make sure of. First guy that gets out of line gets it put good. Come on, pull yourself together, Eddie boy. Because you've been around here long enough to know what happens to stoolies. Don't worry, Joe. I ain't gonna talk. You better not. You just open your mouth that much. It'll be your last time. By using the press at times when regular printing runs were scheduled, Joe Navarre and his confederates were able to print hundreds of counterfeit bills, which they concealed in various hiding places in the printing room until they could safely apply the finishing touches to their roughly made money and eventually get it through to a friend of Joe's on the outside. The money was carried by convicts who had finished serving their terms and were being released from the penitentiary. New Year's Eve, Herndon. That's when the first of these bills started to appear. In San Francisco, Oakland, Santa Barbara, and Los Angeles. According to our last report, they started to show up as far north as Salem, Oregon. Any leads on the paper or the ink? No, nothing that looks very promising. The paper is a medium-priced bond. The ink is a carbon black tinted over with green. On the whole, it's a pretty bad job, but it was good enough to be passed at night to cab drivers and cabaret owners. That's where most of it has turned up. San Francisco and Oakland, huh? That give you any ideas? No, not particularly. I was thinking about that crude photo engraving job that was being pushed out there about five years ago. Most of that crowd's gone now. They're all in jail. Have many of these notes been passed? No, not many, Herndon. But they seem to be coming from a central source. I'm sending you to San Francisco to work out of that office on this case. Right, Chief. I'll report to the agent in charge of San Francisco as soon as they arrive. Goodbye, sir. That's why I can't understand it, I'm right. Jobs are being done poorly, work schedules are behind, supplies wasted. Yes, sir. I... You seem to be upset about something. Any of the boys down there giving you a rough time? No, sir. The boys have been fine. You wouldn't be foolish enough to cover up something for them, would you? It'd be a serious mistake to try and protect men like Joan of Arr, Harry Wells, or anybody for that matter. You've worked too hard to put a black mark on your record after all these years. It'd kill your chances for a parole. I know, sir. I... What's wrong, Ed? You can tell me. I'm a friend of yours. I want to see you get out of here. Who's making trouble for you, Ed? Nobody. Then what's wrong? <sighs> what could be wrong? I'll be getting out of here pretty soon, won't I? I'll be seeing my kids again. What could be wrong with that? All right, Ed. You can go now.
City. What they wouldn't want to see you about. Just what I was afraid of. You don't like the way things are going down here. Says the men ain't doing their work. Oh, that's too bad. Joe. You gotta stop. You can't use the press no more. Are you kidding? We're just getting this operation rolling. Now we'll sit on the outside. Him and Kitty can really push this stuff. You gotta hold off for a while. You can't keep on like this. You'll kill my parole. Don't be a chump. You just keep your mouth shut and everything will be okay. Joe, you have gotta stop. At least for a while, just till I get out of here. It's only four more weeks. In four weeks, I can print up 20 grand. But you can't. You get caught. So I'll get caught. That's a chance I'll take. And what about me? You get caught and I get stuck in here another four or five years, maybe. For something I didn't even do. But it ain't right, Joe. It ain't fair. A lot of things ain't fair. I was 12 years old. My old man was struck by lightning. Two weeks after that, my old lady runs off with a boot like from El Paso. A lot of things ain't fair, Ed. I mean, there's nothing you can do about them. I'm going to see my kids, Joe. You're going to do like you're told. I'm warning you. I'm going to see those kids. And I'm going to get my parole. Even if I have to squeal on you to do it. Hey, what's going on in here? What's the trouble? Oh, no, no trouble at all. He, uh, he slipped on a piece of tight. Lined it kind of hard, that's all. Yeah? That what happened, Emery? Yeah, I... Yeah, I just slipped, that's all. I'll be all right. Okay, okay, break it up. Get back to work. Upon his arrival in San Francisco, Agent Herndon checked with our field office and from the agent in charge learned the names of the cab drivers, cabaret owners, and other victims who had most recently accepted the counterfeit money. Direct questioning revealed that in most cases, the bills were passed by a slim, medium-sized man who was usually accompanied by a woman. But descriptions of the woman varied so completely, it was believed that the passer was really working alone using different female companions to make identification more difficult. However, when shown pictures of known passers who at one time or another had operated in the state of California, one driver thought he recognized the man who had given him a counterfeit $20 bill. The driver thought he had picked up this man one night at a small hotel in a poorer section of the city. And Herndon and another agent put the hotel under surveillance. Photographing each and every guest or visitor to the hotel and later sending their pictures on to Washington for possible identification well, Yes, Herndon, I think we've come up with something on that blonde woman you photographed coming out of the hotel Yes her name is Kitty Monroe, and she has a record. Two convictions. One for forgery, and the other is an accessory in a counterfeiting ring. Yes, I want her kept under surveillance. I'll do it right away, Chief. Oh, and that man the cab driver identified. We have some new information on him. He was released three weeks ago from the state penitentiary. surveillance of Kitty Monroe led Agent Herndon to the conclusion that she was again dealing in counterfeit money. Two known passers had been observed coming to her hotel and were later apprehended with counterfeit bills in their possession. They were crudely made twenties, the same kind as the ones we were investigating. But we still did not have a real lead on the source from which the money was coming. On April 9th, however, the first important clue materialized. 
when Kitty Monroe accepted a briefcase on a street corner from an unidentified man. When the contents of the briefcase were disclosed, the two were arrested. Yes, Herndon. I see. Fine. Fine. That's excellent work, Herndon. Did they make any statements when you took them in? No, sir. They both refused to say a word as to where the money came from or who else might be involved in the operation. However, I feel we're getting closer, Chief. This man we picked up has a very interesting record. Only two days ago, he was released from the penitentiary. Got a message from Sid through the grapevine. Sid? And Ian Frisco? Clemson was picked up delivering that last batch of dough. They got Kitty, too. When? What did she say to the cops? Did she spill anything? How do I know? Well, like it was a message. Did she say anything about this? Subject? Will you shut up a second and let me think, huh? Sound like the whole world's coming to an end. Mine is, Joe. If they trace any of that dough back to this press, I'll get blamed for it. It'll kill my parole. Parole, like parole, that. parole. That's all you can think about is parole, huh? Look, Buster. They get wise to this setup, it means a big rap for both of us. Besides, I got over 12 grand in bills made up around here. You gotta get rid of them, Joe. And the plates, too. You gotta get all that stuff out of here. Take your time, take your time. My little kitty ain't gonna blab to the cops about me. And Clemson ain't either. How do you know they ain't? Because they ain't like you, Ed. They don't get panicky the minute something happens. And they don't start singing, either. I've gotta play it safe, Joe. I've only got a week to go and I'll be out of here. My wife's coming down from Portland right home with me. Joe. I'll take that stuff out. I'll pack it with the trash and take it down to the incinerator. Are you going nuts or something? Why not? We can get rid of the plates. Give me that dough, you crazy fool! Closing time. Quick, get that dough back in there. Closing time. Come on, let's go. Make it snappy. Everybody out. Come on, come on. As soon as I examined those bills, I immediately reported the matter to your field office. As far as I know, this is the first time counterfeit bills have ever been smuggled into the penitentiary. Warden, what makes you think those bills were smuggled in? How do you mean that? When your call came into our field office, I was getting ready to come over here to investigate the source of other counterfeit bills which seemed to have come from this penitentiary. As you can see, these bills are the same as those you found. And they were made by someone serving a term here? It's beginning to look like it, Warden. I contacted your guard captain to find out if you had a photo engraving lab or a print shop. And when I found out you had both, I was almost certain that those bills had been made right here. Why, it's incredible. Yes, I suppose it would seem that way. But as you know, for men who have months and years to figure out all sorts of fantastic plans, well, they just figured out a way to use equipment of that kind for illegal purposes. At any rate, I'd like permission to have the printing room searched to see if we can't come up with more concrete evidence. You have more than my permission, Herndon. We're going down there right this minute and take that place apart. In little more than an hour, Warden McClure, Agent Herndon, and several members of the penitentiary staff had literally taken the printing room apart. Their intensive search brought immediate results. Detailed evidence of counterfeiting operations was uncovered in various hiding places throughout the print shop. Well, Warden, here are the plates. They were hidden in the base of the enlarging cavern. I never would have believed it possible. I can understand how men like Joe Navarre and Harry Wells might be mixed up in this kind of an operation, but they never could have gotten away with it unless the foreman of the shop was in on it, too. They all must have been in on it. Well, it certainly looks like it. I think you'll agree, we won't get the truth out of these men by direct questioning. Unless we can actually catch one of the ringleaders in a trap. 
All right, Herndon. Suppose we set a trap for the ringleaders. Suppose we put everything back where it was before we began this search. Then when the men come in here tomorrow, we'll observe what they do. Sooner or later, the key men will give themselves away. I can argue with you no more, Red. I gotta let you talk me into breaking up my whole setup on account of you wanting to play it safe. And that door and those plates stay where they are. I'm not gonna ditch them until I absolutely have to. You have to now, Joe. Now, before it's too late. Anybody find that stuff down there, I'm the one that gets hurt. Whether they can pin it on me or not. They can ask enough questions to kill my parole. What do you want, a crying towel? What do you think about if you sat in a cell for 14 years and watched your hair go gray? Some guys come in and go out. I don't want much, Joe. Just a chance to make up for what I never had. A chance to see my little girl comb her hair, maybe. Or wear a nice white dress. A chance to see my son get his diploma from high school. I've worked a long time for that, Joe. I've walked a tightrope for it. You're trying to take it away from me. Hey. Hey, who's trying to take anything away from you, huh? It's no skin off of my nose if you get out of here next week or a million years from now. You just stay out of my way. I can't no more, Joe. That dough and those plates got to go out first thing tomorrow morning. And if you don't take them, I will. Oh, you haven't got the nerve. Haven't I? On the following morning, Agent Herndon, posing as a prisoner assigned to the engraving room, carefully observed the men who were working there in order to find out which ones were familiar with the hiding places for the counterfeit money and supplies. Noting particularly the actions of Ed Emery, the foreman of the shop. just came in. Heard him say they didn't need anybody in the laundry, so they gave me a job in here a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Well, you just uh, keep your nose clean. You'll get to know who's who around here, huh? Yeah, sure. You change your mind? You change yours? No. Me neither. Setup's going out. Put that door back. Don't start anything, Joe. I'll blow this whole thing wide open if you make trouble for me now. I said put it back, Ed. I'll talk, Joe. I'll tell the warden the whole story. You won't get the chance. Die! Die! What's going on? Who are you? Secret Service, Joe. United States Secret Service. Joe Navarre, Kitty Monroe, and five other members of the counterfeit ring which was operated from within the walls of the state penitentiary were convicted and given prison sentences varying from two to seven years. As for Ed Emery, it was established that he had no actual participation in the counterfeiting operations and no criminal action was taken. However, under the circumstances, he was not recommended for parole for another six months. At that time, the board approved and he was released and allowed to return home. 